So we're here, BMW PJ Championships at Wentworth. Here on tour again. We're on the road. Outbound show is back, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, Wentworth is looking nice. I played here, yeah. but this is the first time I've been to this event and it looks really, really good. The last time I was here, I think I was about 14 years old. I remember seeing Justin Rose, seeing off the first one. I just remember heads above me, but I mean, it's good to be back here. Yeah, so far from what I've seen, the way they've put this together, the advertising, the ranges, the truck, everything's set out really nice. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to yeah, navigate, your, navigate your, way your way around, but this but... is really, and we're going to really give nice. you a bit of an insight, like we always do, to life at an event. We're going to show you what's going on down there. There's all the hospitality pavilion and stuff. We're going to show you. This is a classic. 1973. 1973. E20 BMW. This one's looking, this is a bit of me, this one. When the, when the check clears, this is a bit of me. <laughs> Man, I'm 41 now. I don't care about the horsepower. I just want comfort. So you need to put your rude boy face on. I'm not a rude boy. <laughs> well, let's have it. <laughs> and then also what we got coming, we're going to try and get on some tour trucks, chat to some players. So make sure you stick around in this video because we're going to show you Wentworth in all its glory. We've got a winner here. We've got a winner oh. here now on the channel. And we've got James, Todd's coach as well. One of them. <laughs> You've got a good team around you then? Really try and think. Yeah. yeah. One of my like kind of things I always try to do is just stick things around me, get good information. See what I can do. How do you treat him when he gives you bad information? Well I'm lucky I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting just watching you guys just work away and obviously on the range now down here. what do you think, just for people listening at home that haven't got this sort of insight and don't see this every day. How do you prep things this early on in tournaments for short games specifically? I kind of leave that down to my team. Yeah. And then I just kind of do the output. You just side of things. Yeah. turn up and play the shots. Yeah, obviously like <laughs> mm -hmm. what we've learned, my view of it is we're trying to get the specific shots okay. that are going to be required for this week. Yeah. Technical reset and then kind of build on from that really. The thing is it's just golf course year in, year out, played the same. Yeah. So nothing really changes about it, so you know the shots that are needed. Yeah. Um, this short game area is not reflective of the golf course okay. at all. Okay. But the fairways are different, the rough's different, the green's completely different, the sand's different. How do you prep then? Technical work only. Okay, I see. So we're not really too worried about outcome because it's not going to be transferable to the golf course. So we'll go out after lunch and actually get on the course and do more specific oh, that for this stuff. week. Yeah. So w would the weather make you change your drills before before a tournament? Um, around here, probably not. Mm. Because even if it rains all week, they can still dry the greens out. So we have sub-air systems to suck all the moisture out of it. Mm. So they'll still play solid, but they'll, they'll behave the same. Todd, as you won um, the other day, yep. do you think that this was one of the key parts in helping you win? Or do you think it was your ball striking? What do you think maybe? Yeah, I think, to be honest, it's, I, I kind of live on the spectrum of, at the moment of like quite flat mind. So it's mm. quite a lot of work of like, I need to be pretty good in most all the areas to like mm. combine it. Mm -hmm. And I think, the work I've been doing is kind of trying to build them all up but and then having one or two that like exceeds or gives mm. me a little bit of a buffer mm -hmm. yeah. that's still in the process but when you was coming down the 18th yeah. like you know running to you winning how was you feeling like mentally see yeah. I think like it's given proven to me that I can do it mm -hmm. um, and obviously being quite far ahead of like the leaders and well in a way away yeah. Um, yeah. kind of just knew I had my job to do mm. and just was down to them yeah. and obviously Felt pretty good coming down the last few. So I was like, well, we still got a long way to go. Here. James, I've got a question. From tour golf to just coaching general amateurs, how does that differ for you? Yeah, I think ultimately you're still looking at the same parameters almost. Yeah. Like you're always looking at strike and flight and in touch. Would uh -huh. be the three things I'd say you look at in order. Yeah. Um, the thing is, the majority of amateur golfers struggle with the first one, right? Strike. Yeah. Um, they can get that under some kind of control. These guys don't struggle with strike that much. The way you say it's different. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's all relative, yeah. right? If Todd's miss hit is like the best day of an amateur golf. Yeah, life. absolutely. Right, and then it comes down to the, these guys as far as you know, how to control the ball, how it flies, how it spins, controlling touch. Whereas your amateur's probably not really that concerned about generating a huge amount of spin when they need to. So would you say for an amateur, Jay, you got to listen to this. <laughs> Jay's an amateur, by the way, keen golfer. Would you say it's more important for Jay to get strike first and then once they got strike, they can look at Highs, lows, and you, you stand there and 
miss hip if it really, mm-hmm. really doesn't matter what yeah. flight you're going for you're not going to get the flight and you're not going to get your touch anyway yeah. so you true. look at those three things and it's a pyramid right you got to strike it to start judging your flight if you stand there and go oh, i put it a bit too low or a bit too high you probably didn't strike it right once you get the strike then you can work on it so what would be for an amateur just the top three things that you should work on when you go and practice your short game practice it yeah <laughs> <laughs> go and do it <laughs> Most people don't even chip around for a warm-up, right? Mm, they don't, yeah. they really don't practice very well. I don't. That's what we were saying yesterday. Um, I would say work on strike mm-hmm. as the core. Um, most players are limited for time to practice. I mean, these guys, it's their full-time job, right? Yeah. So they can yeah. hours in. If you get 10, 15 minutes to put in, five minutes on your strike, then probably 10 minutes just hitting random shots around the green. Yeah, that's to do. It demands more on-course specific stuff. You know, problem solving a little bit, not standing yeah. there with the same club in 100 balls. There's no point. Yeah. Mm. Because there's no second chance on the golf course, you're probably not going to hit the same shot over and over on the golf course either. Yeah, that's true. A little bit of technical, then as real world as you can make it. So what this Brilliant. drill that Todd's doing now is yeah. two, three, one, or one, two, three. Yeah. What is that for? We'll try and dial in the touch and the flight. So Todd has to match his flight and ball speed to get the ball to roll out how he wants it to the target. So the middle tee is pretty much stock shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the next tee six foot beyond it needs a bit more flight. Yeah. And then six foot short bit flatter, bit more rolling. Because yeah. I've noticed like the ones you were doing there, Todd, like for me as an amateur, they're the kind of ones that I would thin a lot right. and it would just go through and you're like, maybe I should have just taken a putter, it's easier. <laughs> but for, for, or you're like, like every every yeah, shot from there would pretty top. much be the same for me. Like I'll probably use like a pitching wedge and try and get it as near as I can, but obviously yeah, there's yeah. levels, right? Yeah, but that's literally what I kind of come in here with James and like, like I said, a technical reset, like okay, like, yeah. it still goes along the same parameters, strike, flight. Yeah. And like layering it, it's yeah. like coming technical reset. Okay, that's kind of where we want it, yeah. and then let's like expand it out to shots yeah. that are going mean, to be required. It's, 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 when I've shown up this week, and technical work's going to be minimal. Yeah, it's pretty much exactly where we want it to be. That's good. You can go ahead to doing the yeah. on the course stuff. Recognize to, it yeah. on the golf course. It doesn't have to think technically because mm. there's nothing to really focus on. It can start to dial in on the, the external stuff. Mm. The touch. That's really good. Actually, is the structure you have. Yeah. So it's just like you go straight in, like you've got your strike and you reset and you yeah. everything's there. And then after that, you just go in to matching flights and ball flight and then onto the golf course. Yeah. Then it gets golf course. Yeah. After that. It's interesting. Wow. Thanks so much. Thanks very much. Cheers, Todd. Best Cheers. luck this week. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, James. Appreciate Thanks, that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even here to talk about golf. We're here to talk about football today. <laughs> How's it going, do you think? Yeah, it's going well. I mean, I mean, listen, we've gone off to a flying start. I mean, 10 points out of 12, and it easily could be, you know, 12 points out of 12 uh, if we didn't, um, you know, give up that goal late in the burn, uh, Bournemouth game at the start of the year. But, man, the, the team's done unbelievable. Um, you know, it's sad to see, you know, Deck go. Obviously, he's a great friend. And to my team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone off to a good start as well. He should have probably two or three more goals, too. He should. He should. Yeah. He's doing well, actually. He's been playing yeah. in a role that... I didn't really see him play for West Ham that much. He could always play more forward, but I think we just couldn't. Whenever he got in front of the ball, you know, we would give up a goal. You know, yeah. if yeah. the ball ever got behind him, I mean, it would be, you know, he was chasing back and we just couldn't. We, you know, he was such a great player at, uh, you know, as a, you know, playing in front of the back three or back four there sometimes. So, yeah, yeah but I mean, uh, yeah, our boys are unbelievable. I love the signings we got in. I think yeah. Edison Alvarez is great. James Ward Prowse is awesome. Yeah. And then I think this uh, Muhammad Kudis that we're going to have is... Yeah, he's a good player. He, he looks... When he good. when he was at Ajax, he was like really, really good, wasn't he? Yeah, you know what? You know, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he, uh, where he fits and how they play him. But I think... You know, Antonio's got off to a good start. Antonio goals. showed he can finish yeah. <laughs> and, know, and score yeah, like goals. But I mean, he's one player though. I like, you know, I know him personally as well. Really good person. He does a lot of the the ugly work, so to speak. He does, yeah. But he does it really well, and he's very selfless. So I think he's he's a great person to have in and around the training ground mm. in the squad. But also, he does a very good job for the team as well. I mean, listen, when you're you're playing as a lone striker, especially in Moyes' system, where you know you got to hold up. Play, hold, hold the ball up and everything and that's not really but right. he's so fast and so yeah. powerful yeah. so yeah. you wouldn't see him if you just seen him you wouldn't think he'd be that strong but i think he's like scary quick yeah because he's such a unit he just once he gets yeah. going he's like a machine isn't he? like a train a freight train you went recently didn't you did yeah, you yeah i went to luton yeah Luton. Luton. And watch and everything. what do you think of that stadium <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, old that's probably like your back garden isn't it oh, <laughs> It was funny. It was like, I mean, the, I mean, 10,000 fans, and I mean, it was all, I mean, there was, there was literally poles in the way 
that I had to like <laughs> <look> <laughs> around, <laughs> around the field and had to go, you know, the, the watch play sometimes. And, you know, I, I, I marvel at how pristine the, the grass and the pitch is mm. uh, yeah. at a lot of stadiums. And, not that that was bad, but <laughs> it surely wasn't the right. other ones I've seen. So I was watching. I was watching the game on TV, and you could see like a piece of grass has just been stuck down yeah. there, yeah. And put there. Yeah, but I, I mean, mean and those fans are right on top. I mean, yeah. literally, I was, you know, Atlanta Stadium is so far away, yeah. and that one, you're right, right there. On right there. On it, yeah. You can hear him crying. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was awesome though, and so. Uh, so yeah, I mean the, what, the boys got off to a good start, and it's exciting. What do you think for them this season? What would you take this season, position wise? You know what? I right now, I mean, listen, I, we all got high hopes. These next four weeks though. are huge. These next four weeks are yeah. huge. We play City Saturday, we play Liverpool, Sheffield United, and then we got Newcastle. So we can, if we somehow get, you know, six points out of those four games, yeah. I think that's a yeah. heck of a start to the year. Um, and then I think that gives us confidence for the rest of the year going in. And you know, I think if that happens, I think. You know, we got an outside chance. I mean, I mean, I'm so high on this outside of Champions League, but Top qualification, and, yeah. you know, for Europe, Europe, yeah. Europe again, yeah. you know, that's six a or good seven. cup run. That's a good I, goal, yeah, isn't I, it? I think, top, goal. I, think, I think top eight, you know, with the squad we got, I, mean, I yeah. think top eight's very feasible this year. If we get some magic and mm-hmm. we get some great results against the, you know, the big six, which we haven't really done. Obviously, we got the result against Chelsea. Um, you know, then I think that was a great result, though. To be fair, I think yeah, Chelsea yeah. will come good towards the end of the season, like throughout the season. I think mm-hmm. they're just getting it together now, but I yeah. think they're a team that will. Perform it just this needs year. time, like you said, the Chelsea I don't team. Know players, like, man, just needs that time. New manager. Well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what he can do as a, yeah. as a manager. So, like I said, these next four four game four uh, fixtures are huge, and mm-hmm. then uh, for confidence and see, you know, what we've got. Uh, but I think I think we got a really good chance of of mm-hmm. top eight. Outside chance of, of maybe a qualification for for champions. Obviously, we got Europa League. If we make it, you know, go deep in that again, and yeah. obviously we win that, we get into promotion. Yeah, no, I'm, honestly, I'm being straight. I don't think four points from the next few games is a ba- is no, bad. No, I think four uh, bad. No. Newcastle are top side. Newcastle They've done really good. well. Yeah. Obviously, City, Liverpool. You know, Newcastle off to a slow start, and I wish we were playing them this week <laughs> yeah. because yeah. you know they still yeah. haven't got their yeah. mojo from last year the way they played. Um, obviously, they've got three weeks, three three fixtures to get everything back going. But we're they also when we play them, they have their Champions League, uh, you know, s- start up for the yeah. you know the middle. Of the That's weekend. a good thing. Same though. for us. Same yeah. for us. I mean, we'll be playing Europa, so um, yeah. But it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I like I love what they're doing. The squad's great. We got some quality players in now. More, I think we got a lot better uh, skill and talent in the midfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah. where we need to get better at. Yeah, I'm exciting, exciting. Exciting times yeah. for West Ham, isn't it? It is, it is. And, and the fans are great, you know. I have to say, as much as I'm an Arsenal fan, the West Ham fans are unbelievable. You know what? I, it's uh, The fan support has always been great and everything. And um, kind of people like you, people ask me about Deck and everything, like, are you still friends? Of course, of course, yeah, course. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, listen, still watch Arsenal. I, I, I watch Arsenal because of Deck. Yeah. I watch the game against Man oh, We'll cut that out. <laughs> 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 Listen, I mean, I like, you know, obviously, you know, it's uh, Dex there now, so I want him to do well. Um, you know, I, I know one of the, the, the I know the Josh Kroenke, yeah. um, and he's a great guy. So, listen, it's, I want him to do well, but I want West Ham to do better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. And what do you think for, what do you think for, you know, how do you think Wentworth is at this it's year? It's great. It's, mm-hmm. listen, uh, you guys have You it. like it here, right? Yeah, I love yeah. it here. I love it here. The course is in, in awesome shape. Mm-hmm. The rust a little bit longer and thicker this year. Obviously, it's been a little bit of a wet July, yeah. so the, it's a little thicker and a little healthier mm-hmm. um, than it normally is. Um, so that's, you know, driving in the fairway is going to be a, a great challenge. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, the course is in beautiful shape again. I think weather for the week looks fairly good. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to uh, good week, another yeah. great week. And what? listen, fans always come out and support yeah. it so strong. You get a lot of love here, don't you? I, I mean, do. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky. I mean, for an American, I get treated very well over here and I, I don't take it for granted at all. What do you think makes this course like really hard, really difficult? Is it the length or what, what do you think? Well, it's not overly long by it's any tight, means, right? but it's tight. Yeah. you got to drive the ball well. If you can drive the ball well, then mm. um, you're able to control your ball into the fair, into the greens because the greens are, are small as well too. Yeah. So if you're out of position off the fairway, yeah. then it becomes a challenge to uh, you know hit a green or put in the right spot on the green and everything. So. Mm-hmm. Okay then. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Billy. Thanks, boys. We'll have to get Cheers, a game result, man. Did you beat Tubes and Jimmy? Uh, I beat Jimmy. Tubes yeah. didn't play. I beat Jimmy. Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's still hurt from yesterday's beatdown. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Billy. Take care, Billy. Thank you, man. Take care.
This is gonna be this is gonna be quality. I'm not gonna break nothing, I promise. Okay, we'll see. Alright, so he's gonna try and keep it up, Mark. And I'm gonna keep this up till he drops it first. You can't come across on my line though, yeah? You gotta stay in that zone. Yeah, this is okay. Are you ready? Okay. I feel like this course every single year is different. The conditions are always different. For example, this year the rough is really juicy in some in some places. It's demanding course that you need to play good and hit some good shots. Uh, I think that's the the biggest challenge of the course. So you can you can score. Uh, it just depends on the preparation, really. All right, day two, BMW PJ. It's Wednesday, and this is the pro am day. Pro am. I tell you what, it's cold. It is. You I can't even. I, I don't think I usually call the shorts, but I, it's you, I, now it's you that's calling the shorts. I had to admit to the Adidas store boy and get some stuff because <laughs> I am cold. But um, it's a great lineup. Mm -hmm. Got lots going on today. Lots Very of clubs good playing. We've got Spider Man. Spider Man's in the in the in the field. My boy Jermaine Jenis. Yeah. Uh, John Terry's out there. Some good golfers. There is, some good there? golfers. We're going to go and have a look at some of the golfers out on the course today, and we're going to have a look at this in a bit more detail. So this is the pavilion. So this is where all the cars are, all the fun stuff going on that you can come and down down and do if you come and visit an event like this, BMW PGA. To be honest, it's a great, it's a great. The way they've set this out is really good. Yeah. I keep saying it, it's really good. But really easy, accessible around to the holes and everything. Mm -hmm. Really, really good. Hopefully the sun comes out. Yeah. Hopefully, please God. Do it. Do it. Oh, we're here. We've arrived. Yeah, and we pulled up in style. <laughs> See this? Let's carry this bag. the wrong way around. It's the wrong way around this one, isn't it? Okay, you know what we could do one day? You play with my clubs and I play with yours. Bro, I can't even hold a right-handed club. My brain can't take it. All right, let's do it. So we're gonna go to the tailor-made truck now and get my club weighted so it's not it's feeling too light to my liking. So we're gonna go on the truck now, see what they say. <laughs> yeah. What a night. What's going on? Good, mate. You? you all right? Yeah, mate. You? Feeling the height? Cool, Got my What's jumper, cool? man. Now I'm all right. You're all right, mate. Yeah, I had to go and buy one. Mate, light, isn't it? Light. Yeah, it's light. Yeah. <laughs> I had to, man. I was, I was so cold. <laughs> I had to. Oh. It's furry, isn't it? It's all right, man. It's nice. That, that looks warm, warm though. Yeah. It looks nice. Warm. Does that size up? I don't even think you I checked think the size, did you? No, I just, you just picked, picked. Yeah, I picked up the one <laughs> that <laughs> looked good. Yeah, I picked up the one that looked about my size. Don't know. No. No, he basically. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, part, no, part no, of it's my listen, swing. Listen, it's it's not so much the club. I would say. I'd yeah. say the club could help because I think you find it hard when you picked mine up mm. the other day. Mm. I think he liked that it was like. Head heavier, heavier. Yeah. and he you managed to feel, feel the, more. Yeah. the club more, but that he's like he doesn't know where so it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, let's sort that out. Yeah, do you hit? The, is it like he hits? He starts it straight. And then, yeah, so it's like I don't, the face is always open. Yeah, so even if it, I, can you hit it quite high as well or what? Yeah, I'm gonna hot melt. Yeah, hot melt there. in the hill. Yeah, yeah. loads. Um, Not loads, but yeah. Um, but the thing is, like, so with my spin a lot, does it? Not really. No. It doesn't, does it, when we played the other day? He was he gets it out there near me, but 
it's it's the shape of it. If he kept it straighter, he'd hit it further. But like with my, so with this is what I feel. You can tell me, but when I hold my irons, yeah, I can feel where they are. Do you know, like even my four iron, I know where they are, so I know how to get back with that. I lose it, and I don't know how to get. So I end up doing that sometimes. Just come, come right. Yeah, right. yeah. Interesting. Isn't it? How you can alter that straight away, and it will change ball flight. The beauty of this now is you've got ten drivers in in one because you can change the settings. Mm, yeah. So that's the beauty of the modern yeah. technology yeah. with the sleeve. So you've got 10 drivers in, in, in one. So even if we didn't change anything today, I could change the setting and you'll notice straight away you hit it better. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just on standard at the minute. So it's quite flat. But it just feels light though. And it's quite square. If we go upright, mm. it moves the lie angle. Okay. So it'll get you away from the slicey one. Mm. And then obviously you've got the sliding weight here as well. So yeah. Chuck that in the heel. Chuck some hot herb in the heel. Yeah. And if you still slice it, mate. <laughs> We're doing everything we can. Uh, my, like I said, my feeling is just that it feels light. When I picked up his, it feels heavier. With heavier clubs, I find that I can hit the ball better, more consistently. Yeah. Mm. We'll get that in the heel strike away. Do you find that in wedges as well, Alex, with players? That if it's too light, it will. Yeah. But that's true, though, isn't awareness, it? awareness, but it affects yeah. the spin. That. So some players love the feeling of a, of a really heavy head on a wedge. Yeah. I do, but like Sam and sort of the other players like it light. Yeah. Because they... Yeah. Yeah, I hate heavy. Yeah. D8? Yeah, I'm a wedge. That's what you said. Your wedges. Your wedges, mm. yeah. Because yeah. they are upright as well, yeah. yeah. I, when I played um, yeah. my old ones, they were at like D, D1 or D2. And then had these other ones, they were at D6 straight away. That put me way out. Big difference. Yeah. It's a huge, huge difference. difference. This, this is a better setting straight away. Mm. Okay. This is a more draw bias setting. Yeah. But we'll add a bit of weight. So what I've done, that's now in the heel, so yeah. it's more draw bias. Is it? We've gone on upright, so the lie is more upright, and, and I've added a bit of loft, so the face has turned in a little, mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Because if the face is open like this, it's just going to deliver open, and you're going to slice it. And have a look at that, straight away. It must look a little better. See the shaft's yeah. now more there, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's real low. Yeah. Mm. I, I, think, I think that alone would more, really yeah. help. Yeah, I think so. That alone. Yeah. You've got sliding weight, mm. more upright, and a little bit more loft. Yeah, you're going to be... Coming next time. I'm hitting it right. I'm hitting it right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking it now. So what we'll do as well, like, like uh, Trey said, we'll put a bit of hot melt in there to make it a bit heavier. <laughs> you should go to a black one. <laughs> <laughs> Right. That comes out like burning, burning hot. We inject that into the head. Okay. And after about a minute, that liquid turns into this, like a solid. Okay. So if you inject it into the head, you can put it in the heel to make a draw bias. And once it's in there, it hardens and, and you can't move it once it's in there. Okay. So uh, hopefully this works. <laughs> And then you can just give me another one. <laughs> just quickly, so that being heavier yeah. allows the toe to pass. Exactly. So, so because the heel is heavier, yeah. the toe comes through quicker like that. Oh, okay, right, I got you. It's, and oppositely, if you put the hot melt in the toe, it leaves the toe open. Can, can I still, for example, even though you got that there, if yeah. I was pulling it too much, could I even put that there? Yeah, maybe. Okay, back. okay. Because yeah. the thing is, this year the face is so light, mm. it's yeah. so light. This weight now makes a big, big difference. Yeah. Okay. So even if you moved it a tiny bit from there to there, mm. it does play a big. It does yeah. like move a lot. Oh wow! Whereas in previous years with the metal face, mm. it's like if you wanted to, yeah, you had to move three. it the whole way, yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole yeah. way to, to make a little change. Yeah. But now it it does make a big difference. Yeah, we'll just put a bit of that. In. Should be money that one, bro. Should be money. Come on, mate. Money, Come on, mate. <laughs> mate, I'm gonna, <laughs> mate, I'm telling you, I'll give you a call on the driving range. <laughs> oh, I can feel the difference. I'm, yeah. I'm telling you, yeah, I can feel the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can feel it at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You 
you, you like so when you get to the top of the swing, you yeah. build your lavender awareness. Where did you put that hot melt in? Out the out the back here, and no. there's a little fort under this weight, and it just just trickle out. it down to about there, right mm. where that tailor made is. That's cool, and it's still a little warm. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah, now it won't move really. Mm. That's perfect. Thank you, man. Yeah, all good, mate. That should. Right, so we got lots of permits and we've got some mm, charity stuff for yeah. Henry, right? Yeah. Yeah, so Henry yeah. was um, worked on this truck yeah. with you and all the other team at Taylor May. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, he was my, my trainee, my mentor, my, one of my best pals. So, yeah, big loss for us. Um, so we're raising some money for him. We've got football game on Sunday, so I'll be taking some bits. Zips <laughs> off, yeah. A bit worried, yeah. We're doing, we're doing some kick ups as well. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we hope to raise as much money as possible, so mm -hmm. your boys help. Oh, and uh, right, got, the, got the ribbons on. And yep. yep, here we go. We have flame burning, that's it. Mm -hmm. And we'll have the link down below, so make sure you head over to the link. Spare whatever you can, donations for a very good cause. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. yeah, every little penny counts, so oh, please so. make a donation. Thanks, boys. Appreciate it. No worries. Nice one. Look, I'm here for you, bro. DJ <laughs> 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 So who's better at you and your sister? Well, it's kind of a day. I would say like we similar, but we have like our strengths. Yeah. We are work you, well. Are you competitive? We're okay. Yeah. Yeah. We usually are on the same team. What's the differences do you think between golf here and the states? I think the layout is different. So yeah, like the, the style of it's course. More, like more narrow here, but tree line. Yeah. yeah. I think the mentality is kind of. Like a feed yeah. to you. Yeah. So when you play in these kind of programs, yeah. obviously you're preparing for the tournament as well, but mm. you, you want to have a bit of fun, so it's like mixed emotions, right? Well, I always try and make it as the best day for them as possible. That's yeah. first and foremost, because I'm going to do my own bit when I'm hitting my shot. Yeah. Once the shot's done, I don't care about my shot. It's then for them to have a great day, because this is a bit different with the celebs and, and, and influencers but i've always learned from programs that you're playing with people that are uh, helping the tournament paying yeah. the money for us to yeah. be there playing for them yeah. you never know who you're playing with mm -hmm. so back when i was playing like the alps tour the mini tours all the the programs was were with guys well it was guys that are potentially sponsor. could sponsor me yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's like i hope you have it. like i'm gonna make it the best day for you possible yeah. and then they come off and they go wow and that's just all the way mm. i've always because to be real like when you're in that situation say alps tour yeah it can be almost life and death whether you've got enough money to be able to play so you've got and you never have sponsors. enough money really I, I was very lucky that i had two sponsors that helped me like play eight events out of yeah. the 20 that we could play but the rest of it i had to make enough money in those events to pay for the others do you ever think back yeah. to them times all the time really i think about how far i've come as a golfer but my my mindset has never changed um my mindset of like money i never think of the cash that we play for which i think it really helps me benefits you're, me you, you're a very humble person every time i see you you know everyone speaks really well of you but when i played in the prime i played in the one we've lived at close house yeah. I played in that with Dean Burmester, yeah. and he was similar to you, like yeah. really helpful. Yeah, you know, no, he, made it fun for us. He was great out here when we played. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the South Africans, from what I've learned mm. and know, is very 
like money driven because if you earn quite a good living here, you can have an unbelievable life out in South Africa. You would block the peak. Um, so do money is, is, is a driver for those guys sometimes. Do you like this course this week, Matt? Well, it's my home track. I love it. Yeah. But I'm up here all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I know it like the back of my hand, which can be good and bad. Yeah. Um, but it's play, it plays. It always plays a little different to what I'm used to playing because the greens are firmer. Yeah. Um, the rough. Sticker, the rough is so tacky. Yeah. The rough sticker. Um, it's a test, you know. It's a real test. But I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I, I love this. I love this course. I love this tournament. Yeah. Is there, is there a little bit of extra pressure because this is your course? Uh, I think so. I think so. I think. I think people know that. So yeah. then. You know, if you're not playing so good, they're probably the question of, oh, this is the home course, you should be. But there's guys out here that have played this, tour this course way more than I yeah. have in this tournament. So yeah. you'd think that they're in a better shape than I am. But I do know really well. I know certain areas that others won't. I know how to play certain holes yeah. if you are out of position or if you're in position. Um, Helps so just having a little bit of background. Better, you know, here at Wembridge, obviously this is a number one course, but you know there's two other courses. Yeah. Do you ever play on those ones as well? Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you like the, when you can get away, like quiet? I think so. I think so. I get on here a lot yeah. on my own. Yeah. yeah. You know, we haven't got the best short game area here, which I'm pushing them to try and, try and get. <laughs> but I come and use this hole a lot because it's quite close to the, the clubhouse, but yeah. far enough away where if I see someone coming up, you know, I can. I can scoot on, but I'll use this 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 green here as like short game. I get in that right trap a lot. Yeah. Uh, use the back of the green because it's a tough green. So it's on um, course practice, you like? On, uh, yeah, I, I think I get a lot of a lot of my short game stuff becomes mm -hmm. more relevant. Yeah. Put tees down, put put fake holes down, and do a lot of practice around the greens at Wentworth, especially. Yeah. Which is, um, so would you say so for good. amateur, that's the best Sorry. place to improve your game on the course rather than like on mats? I think you need to. You need to hit a lot of balls first. Mm, yeah. I think you need to hit a lot of balls to start to understand. Well, if you want to work technical, if you're going to have a coach that can mm -hmm. really help you work the technical side. I'm a big believer in technique makes the ball do what you want to do. So I think you've got to have a solid foundation, good technique. Yeah. yeah. And then you've got to hit enough balls to start to learn your your dispersions, your patterns, and all of that. And then after that, it's getting on the golf course. You've got to play. You've got. To, I mean, it's so easy to get really good on the range with the same wind and hit the same shots. And then you have one wind out of the left, one wind yeah. out of the right, and you've got to hit different things. You know, you, it's really about learning all that stuff, and it's so important to get on the course. That's why it's such a great it's game, right? It's a tough question each after all day. Is it? Right? And the answer? Best answer, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, Cheers Matt. Thank you, mate. Good luck, good luck, Matt. Oh, stop it, Izzy. Your driver's been Tom Brill today. You ain't paying off four. <laughs> Unbelievable. Mm. I've got this sight line put on so oh, they yeah. don't do this for all of them. Oh, it's like what if I see this? You've yeah, used that for years, right? Yeah, but this is now a smaller one. Smaller I used to use the big, bigger one. Yeah. But I found in America, with the green so far, the thicker the grip, the wider the grip, the harder it is to hit soft, short putts. Okay, yeah. uh, I heard that. Is it, is it? Would you use different a different putt on different courses or sometimes, different greens? Sometimes. I really struggle. Um, on slow greens, yeah. Uh, because of that, uh, wait, wait, wait. There it is. Okay, guys. Now we are at the pavilion where everything is. So. Right now, we're going to have a little show around of the whole facility, the whole site. Right now, this is the Adidas Golf Apparel. Yeah. So let's go in and have a look. Launch of a new shoe as well this week. And I've got it on as well. He's got it on, Bloody fresh these on are, the foot. These are comfortable. Fresh to death. <laughs> Straight away. Here you go. So they launched three. You've got the Samba. You've got the Stan Smith. All in the same colorway. To be fair, these, these are some... You can't get these dirty, man. They just look so crisp white, yeah, isn't it? They're good. And they've got spikes on the bottom as well. The pimples, pimples. And then pimples. you've got these ones with the spikes on the bottom as well. So these are They're serious. very comfortable as well, I can't lie. <laughs> very, very <laughs> comfortable. Make. You know what? To be honest, like, obviously Adidas Golf look after us, but mm -hmm. from my honest, humble opinion, 
they are changing golf. They're doing They're so pushing much. the boundaries. Yeah, like this, just yeah. this five years ago, I, I don't think it would have been a look like with a hoodies, but now embrace it. Changing so the game. It's all for the younger generation. Changing the game. See here. <laughs> What's over here, just quickly? This is what it's all about. This is really. all about getting the younger generation involved, letting them get a club in their hand. Maybe yeah. they might like it. You might see some champions here one day. Who knows? And people who potentially have never played golf before. If you're thinking about coming to a golf event and you haven't played, you can come and try it and get a letter for the first time as well. Exactly. That's, this is where it all starts. Yeah. Get the club in their hand as soon as possible. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Look at this. Crowds here on a, This is Wednesday as well, guys. This is like, yeah. This is here a day The tournament before. hasn't even started yet. I know it's a pro-am really and everything. Really busy. Really busy. This is important, Jay. So this is the food court here to the right. Mm -hmm. um, and to be fair, some good food. I can't mm -hmm. even lie. So the stage, there's yeah. going to be a concert today. Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be some... Who's on there? Who's who? Our boy Locks is on there. Locky, rudimental. Now he's looking like he wants to rob somebody <laughs> on the street in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be honest, he was a bit upset today, to yeah. be fair. But I mean, I know they're going to put on a serious performance. And I think there's going to be more performances on the weekend as well. But so again, Locky. I mean, Lockie's playing the prom. We caught up with him earlier on the video. If you haven't watched it already, go and check that out. And busy guy, Lockie, he's these days. Very busy. Playing golf. And then look, we he's, got. He's Lockie the golfer now, isn't it? He is, yeah. Lockie the, the golfer. Have a pan round, Luke. Let's have a look at the have a look at the set. Nice little, nice little spot here. Will you be cutting some shapes on that, Joe? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Nah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm not going to do my two steps. <laughs> But yeah, this will be cool later. A couple hours, I think this will be pretty packed here. All right, let's keep going. So we're walking up now to the, the stand of the 18th hole. Again, there's a little seating area here, bar, drink. Um, in the middle of here on the left is a nice little Lots of BMW drinks being, hut. Lots being consumed. I've seen somebody up. I know that. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Golf. Earlier. Okay. Golf, it's a social look. Okay. Yeah, everyone knows Trey. Everyone knows him. Carry that driver. Lots to do for everyone, kids, adults. If you're here to just be social, you can have a few drinks as well. Um, you can come and get a car if you want. Big up yeah. BMW, sponsoring the You can, yeah, you the can event sign up for before. test drives as well here. <laughs> to be fair, I ain't even gonna lie. Hmm? I didn't really, I'm not really a BMW man, but after seeing these, you like them, I like them, yeah. yeah. Electric or you go in gasoline? No, I'm going, I'm going in electric. You like this color, don't you, Joe? Yeah. That color is unbelievable, that green. I love it, I love it, to be honest. Oh, it's electric all the way though. Mm -hmm. There's one thing over there that I'm going to have to get before we go. And Ice cream. I've seen Luke on camera looking at, uh, He's looking looking at that over there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> yeah, challenges going on everywhere. So Pavilion, Wentworth, BMW PJ Championship is a good one, isn't it? Yep, we've had, yeah, a, great, we've had a great few days, haven't we? It's been good here, hasn't it? Let's go 18th stand or 18th hole. Let's wrap it up over there, yeah? And that was show. This is another good one, hasn't it? It's been a great one, to yeah. be honest. Big up to BMW, DP World Tour, and everyone for arranging for us to be here as well. Really this week. enjoyed it. Hopefully, we give you a good insight into the event, yeah. what it's like at this tournament. And Wentworth, I mean, it's a great course as well. Don't forget Wentworth. Who's going to win? Bearing in mind, this video will come out after the champions win. It's a tough one, isn't it? It's a tough one. I'm going to go Hovland, you know. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go Hovland because it's, you need to drive it, drive it straight and long. Okay. And he's pretty consistent. He's been winning recently, so I'm going to go Hovland. Okay. I'm going to go someone who we spoke to, Billy Horshaw. Yeah? Yeah, I'm going Billy Horshaw. Right. Yeah? Let's see. Okay. Thanks for watching. Thank you.